Hello. Hey, I'll be there in a second. Let me see. what that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the phone booth to change my identity. Change your identity? Yeah. You're not changing your gender identity, are you? <laughs> yeah. Why would I want to do that? I'd make a lousy woman. Yeah, well, don't wouldn't we all? No, I don't know about all of this. Well, I, even the people that think they wouldn't would. They just don't know it. Nobody tells them. <laughs> it's hard to get shadow. honest feedback. Yeah, the five o'clock shadow probably gives you away. Actually, you Hashtag, know, with hormone sorry, therapy, no, with the hormone therapy and the operations and everything, what usually gives is the lower tone in the voice. So you have a cute woman, and uh, well, you know, it actually gives you a way. She speaks often. like this. What's interesting is is if you ask women, because I've actually, I've actually, I haven't asked this, but I've been a part of a conversation where this came up. If you ask women what gives them away, it isn't the vocal tone. It's the aggressiveness. No. Men, no, no, no. I'm telling you. Men speak more aggressive. Women, the way they, they go about things is very different. But I've had, We were in a conversation at a party one time. These girls were like, yeah, like that's, that's kind of what we notice is the men are just more aggressive and assertive and like dominant in how they speak. And women are trained not to do that. The other thing that was really interesting I learned from that conversation is they said one of the one of the women came up and were like well, I don't know if they came up but they said that from the difference between men and women not necessarily people that are trying to change how they look is they said women are trained from the time they're really little to always smile and a couple of the other girls were like yeah, I couldn't even imagine like if I was in a place where like and I was and I tried for an, ten minutes not to smile in a group of people I couldn't. And so, like, that's wow, <laughs> no, but no, seriously. And so, I started paying attention. And you look at people, and like, women naturally, their default facial expression is a smile, whether they're happy or not. That's kind of how they're done. I, I notice it all the time when I see on TV, um, when somebody's a host or whatever, they're always smiling. Uh, even if they're not, even if there's, there's nothing happy to be on there, they're even have they kind of have that token smile. But it's just really interesting. But there's just subtle things that, that, people do that like we never know until somebody points us out points it out that being said my apologies for getting on late today uh it was literally 10 o'clock and and you'll appreciate this 10 o'clock and no it was a couple minutes before 10 and my real estate guy comes in because we're refining of course mortgage, which apparently we've of been course. doing for the last four and a half months and he goes do you guys own property in ohio now the technical answer is no we don't. Now we control an LL. We control uh, an LLC that owns a property in Ohio, but we don't own the property. And and he was telling me he's like, oh well, they're worried if like if it went bankrupt. I'm like, come on, like we'd file Chapter 13 in the state of Ohio with the LLC, and it would never hit us. Like, come on. And so then he finally he's going. We're going back and forth or whatever, and he finally just sends me an email that says. He says, um, borrower, this is like copying and pasting, borrower to provide a signed in date explanation as to confirm if the borrower owns a residence in question, residential addresses. And if somebody's on the internet, they can look at this. This is a long time ago. 239 and a half. Think about that. 239 and a half. It's not even a full property. A half. Whittier Street, Columbus, Ohio. So I asked my wife, I'm like, hey, do you own this property? Or did you, or did you, because I knew she lived in Columbus in 1996 for six months. Rented it. She had an upstairs bedroom. <laughs> and these people are trying to hold up our mortgage for a property she rented that has the address half in it. 
Like, whatever your street address, Al, is, if you put half at the end of it, what do you think the odds are that that is a parcel of land? The answer is zero, because they don't parcel land with half numbers. Like, that doesn't exist. Well, so I put you it and I... Red, I put it in red. Like, full... Yeah, she rented a place in 1996. Red, bold, underlined. That's for those listening. That would be twenty-five years ago. Well, listen, we're both on the same page today. I can see that because you're wearing a cap. I'm wearing my usual cap. I you're wearing a t. One. You're wearing a, a a t-shirt. I'm also wearing a t-shirt. But you're not wearing your heavy jacket. So in I am not. It's getting too your, warm for the in your area of Bayho. It must not be that <laughs> uh, cold in the canyons. Well, you know, I'm wearing a hat that has my name on it that's uh, basically uh, you would wear if you were in the Navy. And I, I felt that the, the jacket had sort of a naval kind of look to it. And I'm beginning to, I'm beginning to look like one of those, uh, one of those rugged uh, seafaring uh, uh, captain types, you know, with the beard and everything. So I figured it all worked together. By the way, I wasn't thinking Navy. I was more thinking ice road truckers. Merchant Marine, really. Is Merchant, what no, but I was thinking somebody that worked in, in logistics in, in Alaska. What? You sit, sit, sit in a room with a, with a microphone with a button on it, and you're going like, uh, all ships at sea, all ships at sea, there's a storm coming in, a oh, storm no, on, coming in. On land. No, truck, ice road truckers. Well, no. Not, uh, well, not lighthouse oh. truckers. No. <laughs> We're not talking about lighthouse. I'm not talking about a lighthouse well, either. And, and it's not I'm talking nine, about a way, guy sitting in front of a notebook computer getting the NOAA updates and talking to the big ships out at sea off the coast of Alaska that are probably fishing for... God knows what's left. By the way, for those who are listening, that impression was really great if you were in a lighthouse in 1926. Yeah. I, uh, hey, Mac, hey, ah, there's a big ship coming in. Ah, you better watch that. Listen, in. listen, see, there's a big storm coming in. Listen, see, see and you're right. Yeah. You're you going to be the... in some big trouble. You better no, he... start chewing that gum hard because it's going to get rough out there. So two things. This apparently the comma is pronounced C. <laughs> Look, see. <Yeah. laughs> um, secondly, I don't know how we got into Sean Connery. Like that was kind of oh, oh, a big C out there. There's a big C out there, and I've got Alzheimer's, <laughs> I, so I don't know I anything. I do believe that Russian C captain might defect. <laughs> Dude, I just want to say this. In addition to uh, us being in... We can never with... prank call people, by the way. If you ever get a prank call, which they never happen anymore because of caller what? ID. I get prank calls from China all the time. Don't get no, no, no. Don't you get call. spam calls from China. But like a friend... <laughs> I, of call yours, like... I call them prank. I call them prank calls. You Fair call enough. them what Sha you want. But Sean Connery can't just pick up the phone and do a prank call because they're like, sure. He could if he <laughs> ah, disguised a... his voice a little bit. Hey, you look very sexy. And it's like, is this Sean Connery? <laughs> Click. Don, oh, by the way, um, Don Knotts can't do that either. That's another guy. Well, there's a lot of people can't that do... can't. There's a lot of people that can't pull it off. But I just want to say I want to welcome back the Magic fan to the program. Uh, yeah. In the last episode, uh, which was called Microdosing on LSD, Yep. Um, which, by the way, the SEO is sh popping up now, and I'm getting more and more um, at, uh, more and more uh, suggestions that I watch uh, uh, YouTube videos about acid. Thank you. But anyway, by the way, um, they no, and they go the other way. So all the acid droppers are going to be listening <laughs> to our podcast. <laughs> now, you know maybe what? They're a... now, now, considering that they're not microdosing, I'm guessing maybe it's the acid droppers. That are going to try to get off acid. That are going to listen to our podcast. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't categorize it as self help, so I don't know that that's going to connect. I Although see. it is kind of self help if you think about it. Well, anyway, I I do. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome back the magic fan, and and it, it, it even as I look at it now, all I have to do is think 
and it moves the other way. It, it moves in one direction and then it moves in the other. And it only a matter of me just thinking about it. And it's amazing. And if you think there's a coincidence between that and microdosing on LSD, there's probably a connection. Well, By the I way, the that's... reason the fan the reason the fan's on today, otherwise I'd have the window open. My wife is out on the patio right now. She uh long story short, she took the day off, the morning off of work. So she's sitting on the patio and I really don't feel like her just listening to the show. So Oh. I thought you were going to say maybe she's talking and that would interfere with the show, but and you know, she can listen too. to the show anytime she wants. You know that, right? Yeah, and I'm sure that's exactly what she, I will tell you this. Of all the listeners we have, she's not one of them. She has, she has no interest in it. <sighs> Yet. Yet. Yeah, no, 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 no. She wants no part of it. Anyway, I do think that if anybody in our audience watched the last episode called Microdosing on LSD, um, if they that we I welcome back welcome them back and now that the magic fan is there I think they're going to be endlessly entertained by just looking at that thing you you cannot see it the way I see it my friend it is it's fascinating well and I will tell you this is that it's 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 the magic fan much like puff the magic dragon so probably something to it that's wow no absolutely but that's a, listen, that you're older nothing than I to am, do so i grew up hearing about puff the magic dragon i wasn't really alive at that point i grew up singing the song well no no we heard it but it was more like way after the fact it wasn't like contemporaneous right. so like whenever that song came out people were like oh okay like i sung it like it would be like somebody watching back to the future right now like yeah i've seen the movie i just wasn't around when it came out Right. So right. we are going to be talking about. I have a, quite a few articles. Obviously, we're not going to read all of them, but I have a, a quite a. a do quite you? A okay. I do. Wow, dude! Right on. So I'm. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a list of articles, and then you can tell me which one uh, hits your fancy, because they all, mm. as Yahoo Finance is is known to do, or prone to do, or whatever, with an own at the end of it to do. Um, mm. they <clears> are good <throat> at headlines. Mm. All right, so I'm going to leave my, well, my favorite one for last, probably. Well, not my favorite one, but probably one I think we can all do. All right, one is seven things you should never do with your money, according to experts, which is the epitome of a Yahoo Finance article. Experts again? All right. That's what they say. At least it's not you know who. As long as it's not you know who. We've, we, we've talked about on the show a woman that shall remain nameless. As long as she's not giving the advice, I'm totally okay with it. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. And by the way... Yeah, we're not going to mention point, her name. No free plugs for her. To that point, I was listening to... Um, as I was driving, and I happened to be listening over the weekend to uh, <clears throat> Rick Edelman. You ever listen to him? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, he's one of these like he's one of these like radio finance guys. So he's kind of like oh. Ray Lucia, right? I think well, he's gone. No, his office is in uh, for those not around in San Diego. He's not um, with us his, anymore. His, oh, anyway, well, whatever. The whole point is his office is, is was in the same building that I used to work in. But anyway, it was like a radio guy. But so anyway, apparently Susie Orman. Oh, did I mention? Her oh, name? you that? mentioned her name. I told I you did. no free plugs. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll no 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 no, but for those for those who I can actually edit that out. I'm, I'll edit that. I think it's a bit a bit strange that Susie or Mans, that Susie or Man is a lesbian. Why the name's perfect. <laughs> I I don't know what to say. Good marketing. She either likes part. she apparently Susie or Susie likes women. Or man. <laughs> well, like, and Susie. It... Come on. All right. So Susie, anyway, so we got Susie. seven things. Come on. We got Don't get none me of these. Go none ahead. of these have to do with the, uh, the 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 hated financial expert in question. Oh. Um, and by the way, she's very arrogant. They asked her if oh. there's anything she doesn't know, and she said no. Um, that that I actually heard her say that with my own ears. <laughs> um, seven things you should never do with your money, according to experts, not named Susie. You know who. Uh, my this one's great. My employer paid me in crypto. It rose one hundred percent in value. Now he wants the employees to return the crypto and take the dollars. That actually is a full headline, which is a bit long for a headline, if you ask me. All right, 
Doge, this one is totally, um, this one is completely, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, clickbait, completely clickbait. Dogecoin yes. price breaches 50 cents ahead of Elon Musk Saturday Night Live guest host gig. Apparently that's happening this weekend. I call it doggy think, coin. Louis should call it dog, what it is. Doggy no, it is. coin. That's, fair enough. I, I agree with you, and I'm going to go with that. So doggy. Okay. Fair enough. Totally right. Uh, Smile Direct Club tumbles on cyber attack news. The irony is very thick in that title. Um, burned out millennials quitting their jobs. I private money flowing around, which is kind of interesting topic hmm. eight ways warren buffett's frugal there's your clickbait you have you put in a list in there eight ways warren buffett's frugal habits can save you money oh uh let's see well one isn't is he like I 90 know. years old now he's 90, 90 years old 97 i think 96 or 97 i read his biography which was an essentially a, yeah it was written in 1923 and mac uh, <laughs> say mac i mac, mac murphy was, wrote that when I, I was eight on years the old, when I was eight years old, I collected bottle caps, and I built that into an eight hundred billion dollar fortune. That was my non fungible token. It was a used Pepsi <laughs> bottle cap. <Man. laughs> that's a good. One. That's a good one. <laughs> um, I'm waiting for that one, next. Yeah, the last one, which I had to leave last because I have a feeling you want to talk about it, but I could be wrong. <sighs> Because Variety, because I know you sent me the article you sent me, I got an article that said, it went right to my email actually, Yahoo Answers has closed. What do you mean closed? That's the title. Closed. Gone. Oh. Yeah, that's not all that's so going to disappear. So it, it was what <clears throat> for Reddit, right? Way back in the day, you go on Yahoo Answers and you could ask a question and somebody would, you know, you'd have crowdsource the answer. And that kind of spun off, well, not spun off, but that was kind of the imp in inspiration for Reddit, from what I imagine. Well, as you well know, Verizon sold off its Yahoo um, properties, and whoever bought them, I didn't even read it yet, whoever bought them said, yeah, we're done with Yahoo Answers. It's done. Well, that, look, it was, it, was purchased by, it was purchased by one of these firms that, you know, buys a company and either take, te tears it apart or sells it or whatever, uh, a Blackstone group or one of these, I can't remember, I sent you the link, and I, but my computer over here overheated and it rebooted and I don't have it right in front of me. But anyway, <laughs> that happens. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, you know, here's the thing. Verizon Verizon bought it for $9 billion, okay? They just sold it for $5 billion, but they kept 10%. Oh, these guys are geniuses, aren't they? They milked it for everything that they could and then found it was a distraction, quote, a distraction from their core business, which is? Whatever. Um, By the so way, these that guys. Was a hot shot at the guy who decided to, uh, to acquire Yahoo back in the day. Or one, yeah. Whoever it was. Well, you know, uh, Yahoo could have been something. It could have been really something. And if it, when it was valued at 100 billion, they wanted to sell it, but Wang or Yang or whatever the guy was, the main dude that started it. Uh, oh, and Jerry, had, yeah, Jerry, Jerry Yang. Yang didn't want to sell it. He thought it could be bigger than a hundred billion. Now remember, that was back when a hundred billion really was something. Okay, a hundred billion to now. Now it's that, that falls out of Elon Musk's pocket when he bends over to, you know, do something. You know, it, it's chump change now. A hundred billion is nothing. Okay. But uh, back that then, is true, by the way, about Elon was something. Yeah, that is true. Like, that is true. Yeah, Elon Musk could, could like, <laughs> yeah, he, he probably has suits that have more money in it than. Yeah, yeah, it's just some some, some his chump ch uh, change that he left in one of his pockets in the in the closet, you know, in the, in the suit. Wait, wait, he he's in wears. the closet? I didn't know that. Well, that's another story. Anyway, um. He's being investigated now because they, they they're they're asking for for documentation because he 
he he did some kind of corporate uh, corporate uh, I don't know if you want to call it flim flam or shenanigans or paperwork so that Tesla could pay him something like fifty billion dollars in compensation and everybody at the SEC went what so um, you know they're asking for more documentation on that which is whatever you know no big deal no big deal but yeah um, <clears throat> so. You know, Verizon, I, I, I know that Verizon, here's a funny thing, Verizon buys Yahoo. And, it, and for six months, every time I go to Yahoo or go to Yahoo email, it says, we need you to okay this 80 page document that says this is now owned by Oath and you are testifying that you don't have any kind of a blah, blah thing with us and blah, blah with that. and. And then it gives you two options. You okay it, and the nag goes away, or you say, I'll do this later. And because of me, and because of my, because of my, you know, my personality and whatever, I just kept saying, I'll do this later. I never agreed to it. So I thought that was amusing. The second thing they did when they bought Yahoo is they made me go through this convoluted hoop of fiery hoops of ridiculousness to configure my uh, email software, Thunderturd. It's called Thunderbird, but I call it Thunderturd. I haven't used Thunderbird in 15 years, 20 years. Maybe. Well, I know. Well, you know me, old school. But anyway, I have about 15 email addresses, about five or six of which are Yahoo. And it made me go through the most ridiculous double, what do they call it? Double opt-in encrypted code password bullshit. Two-factor after, two authorization, two, maybe? 18-factor authorization bullshit, none of which worked properly. And I was tearing my hair out. Finally, got it working. And at that point, I, I, ju I just wanted to go to corporate headquarters at, at, at Verizon or whatever department owns Yahoo and just I don't know, I do things that are unmentionable to them. I just was so I think freaking. for the sake of the fact that the internet is written in ink, I think you need to be a little clearer on what your intentions were not. <laughs> okay. My intention was not to do them any violence, but to give them a piece of my mind. Okay. But anyway, as okay. um, long as they don't give you a piece of my little friend, like that, <laughs> then you're good. <laughs> you know, why did he say, say hello to my little friend when he meant say, say goodbye to my little friend? That's what he really meant. Okay. And but, I don't you know, know how a guy named Tony Montana is supposed to be. Cuban with the name Tony Montana, and he doesn't even he have changed a Cuban it. accent. And he doesn't have a Cuban accent. By the way, do you know where they he got? He did you know have some it? kind of an accent, okay? And his name was originally Tony Montanero. He was Cuba, Cuban, Cuban, okay? But he Obama. changed it to, to Tony Montana because he wanted to sound more like he was from Jersey. Oh, I mean, he sounded more like he was from Jersey. Anyway, I don't mean to, <laughs> I didn't mean to uh, take away your We're, we're going to, we're, 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 we're getting to skid off the road into the ditch now. We've got to take control of the wheel. And I'm giving you the car back. Go for it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, it's all, you know, this, this whole thing, just think, I mean, I, all of this stuff just freaking amazes me anyway, how a company could be worth a hundred billion and this and that and the advertising model and all of that. But. Anyway, these guys are going to take, remember, they didn't just buy Yahoo, they bought AOL. And remember when AOL bought Time Warner? I mean, that was, they merged, oh, that was, but that AOL was, was essentially. Merger. That was the biggest merger ever. And that, and then, then, then they had to divorce. The time. Much like they had to go through the same thing that Bill Gates and uh, Melinda Gates are going through right now. They got okay. to get a divorce from Time Warner. You need to save that for me because I have, I have some amazing stuff. <laughs> I really do. I, I, I it's gonna get crazy. <laughs> okay, I'll, right. just, I'll just keep it very short, but we have to hit on this. So mark your spot. Where I'm gonna, I'll give you the mic right back. So it came out yesterday, and Twitter went crazy. Now I will tell you, I am never on. Very rarely am I ever on Twitter, 
But when something crazy like that happens, you have to go on Twitter. You have to. It's the most entertaining place in the world. So Bill, they kept going there and they said, uh, Bill Gates got divorced and he said like, okay, so the vet, the people that hate him because he's like, you know, supposedly knows everything. They said, well, is he ending his marriage or marriage as a whole, considering that he's supposed to be the expert in everything? Um, then there were people that were saying, wait a minute, didn't he try just to reboot the marriage? So, but that didn't work. So he had to buy a new computer. So all the whole Microsoft tech support jokes were coming out. The blue screen of death. Yeah, no, yeah, that that was one of them too. It's like apparently he hit the blue screen of death, and um, so anyway, the whole point was it, when he when he got a divorce, it was it was just like go on Twitter and look and, and see what was written about that yesterday, and it is more entertaining than anything you'll ever see. So anyway, onward and upward. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I noticed that uh, Yahoo brought back comments. When Verizon took over Yahoo, they had these so-called articles and so forth and so on, but they shut off the ability for anybody to, um, to make comments, to have the comments. And then they brought it back. And, of course, every comment is 90% of the comments are basically right-wing uh, uh, right wing, uh, what would you call them? Conservative people saying stuff basically about the liberal media and about Biden and about how the country's going to hell in a handbasket and all that kind of stuff. And then somehow tying it into the article in some way. I don't know, but that's 80% of it, really. Conservative, uh, right wing ranting about how the liberals are going to destroy this country and Biden is leading the charge. But anyway, I, I, I don't think Biden's I, leading any charge. If you're at, if we're going to be completely honest, I don't think he's leading his own charge. He's leading, but he's walking slowly. I will okay. tell you this. No. And, 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 and we're not going to go off, off the, off the, off the road here, but if I'm Jill Biden, like you can completely be sleeping with everybody in the white house. And let's say Joe's not going to find out. They could tell Joe Sleeping. and he still wouldn't know. Sleeping? All right. Anyway. Um, no, sleeping with other people. Yeah, but if you're asleep, what difference does it make? Anyway. Um, <clears throat> By the way, that's a really bad term, too, because that's not really what happens. It's not like you're just right. cuddling with somebody. Or even sleeping. Right. Exactly. There's not a lot of sleeping going on. Yeah, it's like, it's like a nap, like you're taking a siesta. <laughs> all right okay all right anyway. um yeah this is why you're so um, why you have the mic today so i have the mic i thought you had the mic today i don't have the mic i have the fan you have the mic <laughs> the you magic have a fan, fan in the back you have a fan fan in the back but it's not magic that's the problem i know i could i, I almost feel like turning that on now but um yeah so uh What's really important, you know? What's really important? Um, well, first of all, I see that uh, I see that Bitcoin took a small dump today, and uh, a lot um, of stuff took a dump today. Yep, a lot of stuff did, and uh, and I feel like we're on the precipice of a of a uh, a change that. People are going to wake up and realize. Here's my opinion: People are going to wake up and realize that, in spite of this virtual matrix reality that we live in, okay, we're in, we're in deep doo doo. This this country and this economy is in deep doo doo, and uh, you know it's been a rampant consumer. I want everything on credit. Uh, entertainment, uh, 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 three ring circus of have anything you want, be anything you want, do anything you want, and you'll be a success if you just have the right attitude and you work hard. Bullshit. Um, and uh, and now people, I think people are starting to wake up to the fact that things are not going to be going back to some kind of wonderful new normal. It's just not going to happen. And I think you think it's going to happen, but I don't think it's no, going to happen. No, I, I think in – okay, so I think in some respects it is, and I think in some respects it isn't. 
So uh, I think as far as habits go, I think, yeah, I think it's going to go back to normal because we've been trained, and you're the psychologist, not me, but we've been trained to act in a certain way for so long, it's going to revert to that mean. Now, when there's a lot of destruction that was been le- that you know has been left in the wake for the last year, mm. um, yeah, I don't, I just, I, I don't think so. I think, like, I wanna, I'm, I'll, as I'm talking right now, I just want to pull something up that was just really crazy. Let me, that kind of actually illustrates what you're saying. All right, mm-hmm. almost got it ready to go. Um, so in the last year, basically, we had. Um, yeah, in the last year, you have all these shutdowns, you have people lose their job, like, what do they say, in New York City, I think they said, like, 60% or more of the restaurants had permanently closed, like, they're just not opening back up, and a lot of people had moved to Florida, I, I read the stat today where, um, I don't know, it was like 90% says it's loaded, and it's not loaded, uh, 700, is, oh, you'll, quote, you'll appreciate this. 700,000 people have moved moved out of London last year. Hmm. Hmm. Seven. I mean, how is that even possible? Yeah. I I, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a strange, it's a strange deal. Now, is that their version of Brexit? <laughs> Leave London? Yeah. Well, I don't know. The maybe they'll move to Nor- yeah, no, maybe you're right. Maybe they move to France. Maybe they move to Northern Ireland or like, uh, you know, Brex- or, yeah, Brexit. How about Lexit? Or, or if they're going to be honest, Lex us. Yeah. We're all just leaving. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why this isn't open up. This is one of these crazy things. But anyway, I was watching this thing, and I, I wanted to share it, but I obviously I can't because it's not letting me freaking open the article. Um, some guy yeah. took a picture. He just took a video on Bowery Street in south of the south part of Manhattan, right, which is normally, like, crazy busy, right? Mm. Mm. And... There was, I think, in the period of a, a minute, I think six cars drove by. And there was nobody hmm. on the street. So I think in wow. that respect, to answer your question, I, I don't, you can't sit here and level that kind of financial devastation on a city, you know, not just New York, but any city, and just say, hmm. oh, well, it's going to come back immediately. No, I don't think so. I, I, I agree with you on that. But if we speak in more generalities, like, will people stop eating at restaurants? No. Will people stop going to sporting events? No. Will people, you know, engage in their life without a mask? Of course. Like, like that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think the people that are <clears throat> the holdouts are going to look really. They're going to do that. They're going to say, "I'm going to wear a mask forever." Well, they're going to do that until they're the only people in a hundred people in a room, and they look like an idiot. And then they're going to go with the crowd, like everybody else does. So, I agree in some respects. I don't agree in others. Hmm. And I'm just going off precedent. That's all. That could be wrong. Yeah. Precedent could, doesn't always have to hold. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do you think? What, what do you think is going on in India right now? I mean, I don't oh, live. I, I don't they, live. I don't live there. But from what I can see in mainstream media news, uh, and and of course they always, in my opinion. They always want to capitalize on the worst story they can possibly report of disaster and terribleness and evil and and oh my God the sky is falling you know I mean that's that's what they do and that's how they get ratings and that's how they keep people glued to the to the well, screen but come on man what the yeah, did, so were they not right. vaccinating their people were no, they no, no. So- it's what I told you yesterday when we were talking about it. Yeah, but so I don't get COVID, it. I don't get it. Well, when I'll give an example. So when COVID first hit, this was back in February of last year, like before it ever became a big deal. It was when, even before Fauci said, don't wear a mask. Um, I think it, I don't even think, really think it had even hit our country yet. I think everything was still isolated in China at the time, right? So uh, one of the guys came on, I want to say it was CNBC. It was one of those mm-hmm. like uh, fringe cable channels, and he said, and it was funny. People just didn't believe him. And they said, he said, everybody's going to get it. It's just a matter of time. Like you can't stop it from happening. Well, everybody's going to get it because everybody's going to be vaccinated with it. No, 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 no. That's not what he was saying. What he was saying oh. was, 
this disease is going to go around the country and around the world. Everybody's going to get it. You can't stop it. So all you can do, to, to use the old sports quotes, you can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. And that, that, was, mm. what he was, that was the gist of what he was saying. Mm. So it was like, okay, what we need to do is we just need to, like, honestly, lower the death count of the people that are going to get hit hardest. That's all you can do. You can't stop it. There's nothing you can do. And so I, I remember he said that, and I'm like, all right, well, that's fair. I, I, I can believe that. You know, mm -hmm. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, but I think it's a legitimate the like thesis. So then as, as it was going through, as COVID was going through China and Europe and the U.S., and then it went through Brazil, um, mm -hmm. and all, you know, it, Italy and everything like that, it never hit India. And I kept watching the COVID dashboards, and I'm like, this place has a billion people. They're all tightly, they live on top of each other. Like, it is really dense in, in India. Oh, Oh, I mean, the major cities? Absolutely. Yeah, in the, country, and in the countryside, it's just in the, the country, opposite. Well, but, well, but that's true anyway. Yeah. But anyway, but that's my point. Yeah. And I'm like, how is this not going through India like a hot knife through butter? And it just never did. Really? Did it? it? Never. No, it never did. That's why we're talking about India now. When, when have you heard of India ever being hard hit by COVID? It never did. I and thought everybody... About, I thought they all, every country was hard hit by COVID. Oh, and that, well, that's the whole point was the assumption was there that it happened, but we're talking about a fifth of the world's population. And mm -hmm. you got to understand, India has a huge um, travel interaction with Australia. And so mm -hmm. Australia is not letting in its citizens right now, its own citizens. If you're an Australian citizen and you're coming back from India, they won't let you in the country. They won't even let you board the plane. Mm -hmm. It's a big to do in, in um, to use a 1926 word, um, <clears throat> it's a big deal in Australia. And they're like, you're not even letting your own citizens back? And they're like, nope. Wow. The thing is, it, it never, it went, it's going through India right now because it never did. Had it hmm. gone through India nine months ago, like there's nothing left for it to burn. It's like a wildfire. If the wildfire burns down half your neighborhood and saves your house, the only place that it can burn are the places where it didn't burn before hmm. so it's going it's going through everything it's I, I mean i don't know at this point what other countries haven't been hit but that was the one initially when covid was going around in february and march of last year i go india is going to get torched i just mm -hmm. didn't think it was going to be april of this year i thought it would be april of last year so i don't know how i don't know how they kept that from happening my guess because i i believe that there's an old adage that's saying, you know, when some when something happens, is it a question of nefarious intent or negligence? And 95% of the time, it's negligence. All right, so real quick, and we're going to jump on this. I want to show you this video. This is downtown. Let me get. I'm going to show you downtown New York. This was yesterday. Where is? looking at all the share windows. I want to make sure that I have the right one. There it is. <clears throat> all right. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see okay. it. This is down. Let me mute this. This is downtown New York. Right. Yesterday. <laughs> Holy. And, and, and those cars are Uber drivers. Maybe. But yeah. you, you notice what you don't see? People. I always, it's a, people. Thank you. Aren't they in Nobody, the uh, that skyscraper? That's one person right there. One person. Yeah. Anyway, that supports your thesis where you said <laughs> it's not going to go back to normal. Like, I agree. They're screwed. Like, you're going to need, I think, and I think, so I always try to figure out what the next steps are. When you see New York like that and everybody leaving, you're going to see taxes have to go up because they can't print money like the federal government, and you're not going to get bailout approval over and over and over. They have to balance their budgets. So at some point in time, you're going to see a massive, and I'm not saying it's going to go Republican. I'm not saying that. But you're going to see people dragged out of City Hall, and you're going to see a massive political revolution in that city. And if I'm Bill de Blasio right now, who's the mayor of New York, I'm very worried. Well, there's a simple solution. Because if they you're just, in New York, you just you just if you live in New York and Manhattan, you move to New Jersey. You move five five miles away. Look, there's, there's a simple solution. They just sell New York to the Chinese. 
Chinese take over. Don't be surprised if that happens. You know, I'm being sure. I'm I'm 100 percent serious about that. It's called a dead end. Because there's a lot of Chinese people that would like to live in New York, and and, pay, and they're just and they're, waiting. They're just waiting. They, right now, that's the biggest segment of the real estate buying market is Chinese bought cash buyers. Now, that's those are private. That's private, and I think you're right. But don't be surprised when you start to see. Like when you already talk about commercial finance, they have whenever you owe a whole bunch of money, they have provisions in there where you borrow the money from them. And then the solution, if you're going to go default on it, is called a debt equity swap. Mm -hmm. Meaning that like I'll take your property in lieu of you paying me back. So mm -hmm. don't be surprised if that happens. Like that could happen a lot of different ways. And, and part of it is, and I, I don't know who gets money or where, but if you have a 30-story building in New York, and let's say it's financed through, um, you know, it could be China, it could be Germany, it could be whatever it is, it could be Russia, Russia, huge. Um, don't what? be that's that. Don't be surprised to see that happen because at some point in time, you have to pay the piper. Putin, you have to pay the piper, right? <laughs> yes. And you look at and, and not to pivot too much, but you look at the rental market and you have people that are what a year behind on their rent. Mm-hmm. They're never getting mm -hmm. back. They're never going to pay that back. They're not going to claw. They're crabs in a bucket, and they are not going to claw their way out. They're period. not. You know what it is? You're like Christian Bale's character in the Batman uh, Batman Begins. You're in that <laughs> big, huge hole, and nobody gets out. And you have to be Batman to get out. Like, nobody's getting out. That Nobody's yeah. talking about that right now, but that's a huge deal. Like, that's a huge deal. And I was thinking about that. Like, if you were going to, if you said, I want to go rent an apartment, right? <clears throat> I, wonder, I was thinking, I don't know the answer. I want to get your take on this. What would the landlord look at? Like, would the landlord immediately, like, if, you, if, if they have an opening, or even if they don't have an opening, if I just figured out who the landlord is and said, hey, I want to rent one of these apartments. If you have somebody that's a year behind on their rent, I'll give you cat, I'll give you a down, I'll give you three months rent right now as a down payment or whatever. I imagine he'd probably put an eviction notice on him. Unless you have a Fannie Mae loan on your on your property, you can kick him out. That's true. So kick him out on their Fannie Mae. Yeah, so I think that's another one. Forget about New York too. <clears throat> I think the rental market is gonna go through a big deal because a lot of the rental places are owned by people and, and I'm not I'm just saying about your age range. Yeah. It's their retirement oh. portfolio. Yeah. And it's like you can't sit here and stick them with that when that's you know, they have medical bills and and that that's that's how they make their money and you're a year behind on them. I think you're gonna see some people buying distressed properties. My wife was looking at a boat. No joke, so last night. My wife oh, no. was looking at Please. a boat like no, four months ago, and there was this boat. I mean it was like a yacht. Forget boat. I mean it had two decks. I mean, it had a legit kitchen. It had a legit living room. I mean, the bedrooms were were not like little just places with beds in them. Like, like they they, they were legitimate rooms. Like you could like vacuum the room. It was long. It was, and it went for like two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. And they're selling it now for a hundred and seventy. And she's like, she made an appointment. We're gonna be looking at that. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know if we're gonna God. buy it. So she's like, she's like, well, maybe we could liquidate if we could liquidate your Robinhood account pay cash for the boat, and then sell our house, we just reimburse your Robinhood account. But, I mean, that's what I'm saying is, like, things are going, like, people are, I think in the next year or two, you're going to see, honestly, people take a bath on things. So if there's something that you want, let's say you're looking to buy a house or do this, I'm telling you, the house housing prices, at least here in San Diego, are dropping. I, I'm watching it every day. They're dropping. No, no Yes, no. they are. I was looking, I was literally looking before we got online. Where's the one I have right here? It was yeah, Redfin right here. There's a 1,300 square feet, three bedroom, two bath house in PB. And I know that area enough to know that that would probably go for a million dollars. It's it's in the eights right oh, now. Oh, at least, dude. Yeah, it's going for under nine. And they it's back on the market. Well, you might be right. You might be right about that. I really but doubt. But my whole point, my whole point is this: is this is where vulture capital comes in. So if you want to sit here and take advantage of an opportunity that you ne probably will never come up again, 
Yeah. I would save your money and keep an eye on it, whether it's oh, of a course. or a house or. Um, uh, first of all, the two have. First of all, I, I don't fantasize about boat porn anymore. Okay. Um. I, I, and I have a few friends that used to, and they've g even given up on boat porn. Um, right now, you know, the two happiest days of a boat owner's life, when he buys it, when he sells it. I know a lot about boats, the cap, okay? I know a lot about boats, all right? And let me tell you, though, you do not want to buy a hole in the water that you throw your money into, okay? That's what it Don't is. do it. Do not do it. Rent the boat, lease the boat, borrow the boat, find a friend with a boat, do not buy that boat. In fact, what you should do is pay me a thousand dollars to make sure that I advise you and continue not to advise you to not buy the boat. It'll be the best deal you ever made. All right, here's one another one for you. I'm gonna play, we're gonna play guess the price. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Four, okay, this is uh, 1160 Grand Avenue in PB. It goes in San Diego. It is four blocks from the beach. Yeah. Okay. It's on probably Dawes Street. For those mm -hmm. who don't know where that is, it's four blocks from the beach. I, yeah. the best beach community, best beach community in San Diego. Four bedroom, four bath, 1,900 square feet. Mm -hmm. What do you think it goes Standalone? To? Standalone. Think SFR? Yep. I'm looking at the picture right now. Yep. Okay. Okay. Silence never makes good radio, Al. What do you think? <laughs> That's called dead air in the business. Yes, it is. By the way, yeah. If you're on dead air for for eight seconds on radio, they automatically kick to um, backup programming. Commercial. I don't know if you know. Commercial. That. No, 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 no. Backup programming. Uh, all right. They think, the, they think a connection went down, so they go to a backup programming. <laughs> they do. Sir, I'm, that's not even a joke. I know. Right, so I know. Think? I was four in bedroom, radio. Four bedroom, four bath, nineteen hundred square feet, four blocks from the beach, single family home, front yard. All right. Presumably backyard. And dot, dot, dot. Yeah, what do you think? Now it has a backyard too. I'm looking <clears throat> you mean it's for sale right now? It's on the market. For sale. I'm looking at it on Redfin right now. Uh, $1.8 million. Uh, $1.1 1. 1 million. All right. Here's prop. Look, I know you know a little bit about real estate. Well, practically a lot. By the way, 1.8 is about right. That, that should be about right. And I know quite a bit about it also, but here's the thing. It's probably a dump, okay? It probably has been rented for 30 years. It is a piece of crap, okay? And it needs a huge amount of facelift, and you can't just put a lipstick on the pig. It needs a major structural uplift, okay? And that's probably why it's going. Or it could be going for that paltry amount of one point something million for yeah, Jesus, less than 2000 square foot home. OK, it might be going for that because the owners are like 90 years old and they had it for 30 years and they've rented it for 30 years. And, at, you know, and they've, and they've got much higher than market rate. Yeah. And they, and they just, you know, they just they just said, you know what, just 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 to sell it. If we get at least a million for it, we're happy. So, By the way, know, what can't... do you think their what do you think their property taxes? If you bought that thirty years ago, can you imagine they have to be paying like nothing in property taxes? Yeah, they're probably paying a thousand dollars a a year in property tax. A year, a, a year, yeah, a year in property. Maybe at the most, you know, they, they're paying that. So that's why they've been renting it out all the time, and they're tired of that. They just want to be done. They're probably moving to some place or it just. You were going to stay or, in Florida. I was going to say Florida, but they wouldn't move there. It's too humid, um, it's too hot, and there's too much COVID shit going on. But anyway, um, it could be, you know, maybe their kids are selling it. The, the parents have passed away, and it was in a trust. Still, I mean, you, it, it's all relative. I mean, I saw, I, I, like, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I, I saw a, a, a one-bedroom, one-bath attached apartment a couple blocks from the Kate Sessions Park, which is a very nice area. Technically, it's Pacific Beach, but this is barely Pacific Beach. On the border, yep. They wanted like 650000 for it. It had one parking space. And I'm going like, what the hell? You know? So, I mean, and it was attached. It was attached to three other units. So, you know, I mean, come on. 
it's ridiculous, but it does go back to this, that in my opinion, what is happening, and I don't know if this is honestly, if this is a social engineering thing or the Illuminati or the 1% of the 1% are behind this, but the same thing is going to happen that happened in 2008, okay? At some point, at some point, it's going to collapse and the money from the Chinese or the hedge funds or the 1% of the 1% or the, the guys that made 8,000% 8, return on Bitcoin or whoever these people are, I'm going to come in, like you said, and buy cheap. And they're in it to own it. Okay. They're in it to own it and rent it back to the 99% for way more than people can afford. You want me to give you the economic term for what you just described? <laughs> It's the same thing with I Yahoo. Right. It's I the agree. guys that bought Yahoo for five billion. They would not have bought Yahoo for five billion if they didn't think they could take it apart and sell the individual pieces for ten billion. I mean, come on. And then they'll keep some of the stuff for themselves, and uh, and then they'll they'll get rid of the rest. And the, it, it, that's what they do. You know, that's what uh, you know people like Mitt Romney's company did, and that's what these guys are going to do. It's all going to be a giant fire sale, and and they're going to keep the best. They're going to get rid of the rest, you know, and uh, and and they're and they're going to charge exorbitant rents to people who are making minimum wage or thirty dollars an hour. Thinking, okay, I'm making thirty dollars an hour, but it costs me three thousand dollars a month for rent to live in a two bedroom in San Diego. Come on, man, it's crazy. So yeah, so what you're saying I think is right, and I think it's coming. I think when you look at a flurry of buyers, especially cash buyers into something, that's a, what you're going to see is, and these are the economic ter economics terms, but you're going to see uh, a wave of inflationary pressure, is what they call it. The big bug of pushes the price of Yellen is already yeah, talking. Like Yellen is already talking about raising interest rates, and that's what sent stocks down today. That's exactly what sent stocks down today. So what happens is anytime you have an artificially high um, interest in something, it sends inflationary pressure through it. It sends the stock price up. Bitcoin's like that. The stock market's like that. Everything's like that. But like every tsunami, when the wave comes in, what kills everybody isn't the tsunami coming in. It's when they all get dragged out to sea when the when the sea recedes. Well, it's and both. What you're gonna Come on, it's is, both. Well, no, but I'm saying a lot of people get dragged out to sea. Yes, they, they die. Do. Like a lot of. They do. But anyway, the whole point is, without getting into like the, the body counts, <laughs> I think what you're going to, I'm agreeing with you on this. I think what you're going to see is you're going to see once that money finds an, a, a different opportunity cost, right? So the Chinese buyers that are buying single family homes here say, no, we're going to go, instead of buying single family homes, we're going to buy uh, commercial properties or this or that, or they're going to, you know, whatever they're going to do. And you see that money dry up, you're going to see the the asking prices for these properties go way down because you're going to it's not you don't, you're going to see a dearth of buyers, and what in economics they call that a deflationary pressure. Did you say a you're, Darth? A Darth, not Darth Vader. D E A R. <laughs> a Darth Vader. A Darth, yeah. Property. But anyway, you're going to start to see people where it's like all of a sudden the prices start to collapse, and that's exactly what happened in 2008. There weren't any buyers. Catch a falling knife, man. And if, and if you remember back in 2008 and you had all these things where people, you know, their housing, the houses went into bankruptcy or short sales or foreclosure or whatever it was, and people went in and bought it really low under their feet, which I was one of those people, mm. and then you turn it into a rental unit, and right now you have a rental unit where you have a mortgage and nobody's paying you rent, Ugh. well, you're going to have to sell it. And right now, if there's buyers, that's great, but if there's no buyers... That's a problem. First of all, if, if you if you have renters, that's fine. But if you're showing that there's no rental income coming in for the last year, that's a problem. But if there, if you if you are trying to sell it and there's no buyers, you're going to have to lower your asking price and lower your asking price and lower your asking price, and you're going to see a big drop in real estate prices. I, I believe that. So anybody listening to this right now, I, it's not going to happen the next three months. It's not going to happen the next six months. But I'd say over the next year or two. You're going to see prices 
that well, we'll that's possible, but again. there are some people are arguing just the opposite that real estate is the only asset to have to beat inflation. But that's that if you have a property, especially in California or Southern California, do not sell that property because it's well, going to keep going up and up and, and, and up. And I would I would take anybody who made that argument to me and take a look at any price chart for anything in existence and tell me that it only goes one way. It can go down and it will go down as fast as it goes up. It'll go down. I, I bought that place. I'm looking. It's funny. I'm looking at it on Redfin right now. Um, I bought this place on in TB, which is Pacific Beach. It's the neighborhood we were just talking about. And I bought a single family house in TB for three hundred and eighty thousand dollars in two thousand and eight, which is just nuts. Right now, it's going for eight fifty. Hmm. A little over ten years ago, it went for forty percent of that amount. Well, I, it should look. The rule of thumb in real estate SFRs, it should double every ten years. That's the it rule. It should. Of thumb. And but most people do not consider that to be a good investment. Well, it should, but that, that rule was given before you had securitized, securitized investments where you're <laughs> putting it in bonds. Like, no. So I, what I would say is this, is it, it can go, the reason it goes up is because there's greater interest, but it can go down. Demand. To the it's called demand. It, the place I bought in, two, I remember in 2007, it was built. And I remember walking by, because I lived in the neighborhood. And it was going for seven hundred thousand. I remember seeing the flyer, and I was like, "How does anybody afford that? That's insane. That's crazy." And four years later, I bought it for half that. Half. I'm not saying that's a bad decision. You know, no, if you but can what keep I'm saying it rented, is for those... and you don't have a lot of maintenance issues, and you don't have a infrastructure right. problems. If the best thing on... you said, the best thing I heard about what you said was that it was built in 2007 and not freaking. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. I was built no, in '64. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like a lot of stuff. It's not like a right. real property, right? Nine. I'm. I. What I heard was 2007 and not 1907. Okay. Correct. So that Correct. was great. I mean, that's that. that but that's the, good. The whole the whole point is that if if it was something where it kept going up, well, then when should you buy a house immediately? Because it's always going to go up. But anybody that if, if you really believe that, and I'm not saying you, Al, but anybody that holds to that theory needs to explain 2008 to the audience <laughs> because that didn't happen. That went down really quickly. In four years, it went down. That property went down 60%. I know. And when all the cash, if, if all the buyers right now are like, you know, what are you? People in their 30s and 40s, and they're getting mortgages from Bank of America or Chase or whatever it is. Then maybe... And an exceptionally low interest rate, by the way. Correct. But I, I'll tell you this. When I sold that property a few years later, I sold it as, to a cash buyer. Hmm? It closes in, what, five days? Oh. You don't even have to go 30 years. There's no inspection. There's no pest inspect. There's nothing. It's cash. No contingencies, nothing. And so once those cash buyers drop, you know, really dry up, you're going to have a problem selling it for what you want to sell it. So we were actually just a window into this conversation. Last night we were talking about that. Like we're talking about selling the house that we live in right now and renting for a couple of years. No joke. Renting for a couple of years. We're just trying to figure Not out necessarily a bad, a bad situation. That's yeah. in fact the way you with the way you structure it. I mean, you could probably have your company pay for it, and you just happen to be living in it. So your company pays the rent for a few years, and you write it off. And I'll tell you what her dad does. Her dad does did that in his old house in Rancho Bernardo. His that the company owned the house, and he rented. Um, they rented back everything except his office back to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what they did. So my whole point is this. Anybody that's sitting here saying, oh, you know, I missed the boat on the COVID stocks or this or that, or I can't afford housing. I'm telling you right now, watch tsunami footage. It comes in and it, the, the wave wrecks everybody coming in. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that get yanked out because they don't realize the water is going to go back and they get yanked out to sea. And it's not, and it's, you know, that's, that's what kills a lot of people. So right now for us, we own a house, but if we, if we just say, okay, we're not going to do anything, then our housing price is going to get affected like everybody else. 
So we're actually looking at selling right and not now, but in the near future hmm. and then renting for a couple of years, which by the way, I told her, I was like, well, if we rent for a couple of years, prepare for our taxes to go up because then you can't write off your mortgage interest. Hmm. You can't write out your property taxes. Hmm. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can't. So I said, we're going to be paying more in taxes just on that alone. Hmm. But I will tell you this. Every time there's a catastrophe that's on the horizon, there's an opportunity. And I agree with you. I think you have this massive inflationary thing with they're spending all this money right now and um, all this free money going to people. But I think in, in, the, in the next couple of years, well, you're going to see it go down. You're going to see it go down, not in everything. No. Like the prices of goods, lumber, food, gasoline, they're all going to go up. Electricity, we haven't even talked about that. You're gonna put. You're gonna make everybody here in California drive an electric car, so everybody is required to use electricity to power their car. What do you think happens? If you know the law of supply and demand. When you make everybody use a product. Yeah, this is not a, Idaho. A limited, we don't have limited, hydroelectric power that gives us basically right. free juice. But, it, but this if is you not limit, Idaho. We don't right. have and that. If you, if you take a supply of electricity in the state of California and you say everybody in the whole state has to use it way more than they ever did before, what do you think the price impact is going to be? It's going to go way up. Well, you and know what's going to end up happening. And that's, for people that, and that's the same for people that don't even have a car. Like, <laughs> let's say you take the bus yeah. to work, right? Yeah. Your electricity yeah. cost at home is probably going to triple. Yeah. But you know what we're, what's going to end up happening is we're going to end up buying electricity from China. 90% of which is powered by coal, okay? So they're going to ship electricity. They're going to sell their excess cheap electricity to us at a premium. That's, it could happen. Or Mexico even, you know? They have very loose uh, EPA uh, environmental laws. Oh, they, have they, no, burn, they have no protection. They don't even have one of those agents. They do have some because they're cho they were choking to death in Beijing and they literally couldn't breathe. So they had to do well, something. But they don't on. have an age. They don't have an agency. They have a Politburo <laughs> who basically says you're done. Like what they're doing to Jack Ma, yeah. right? Oh my God! It, they they they're putting that guy through the ringer. They disappeared the him for three. They disappeared him for three months. So, but to your point though, you said they're going to. They are. Do you know that? China owns a massive solar farm in Utah, or I'm sorry, not in Utah, in Nevada. Oh, of course, Nevada. No, oh, Nevada. Yeah. They should just turn the entire state of Nevada into a solar farm. They should. And underneath the solar farm, they should grow a cannabis. Okay. And if they do, if they do that, well, no, Colorado needs to be all the cannabis. It should be like Hunger Games, right? District <laughs> Colorado is the cannabis zone, right? This well, that's Nevada. where they sell it, but they no. grow it in Nevada. Well, either way, but what, what my whole point here's is, what they you do: you, you got to rename Nevada to like Solara, right? So yeah. if it's all well, solar. here's what they do: here's what they do. They take the entire state of Nevada and turn it into a solar farm. Underneath that, they have Bitcoin mining, and underneath that, they wow. grow cannabis. They grow cannabis, then Bitcoin, then solar. We're good. Well, the solar pays for the Bitcoin mining. By the way, do you well, know that what I'm China, saying. China just recently shut down one of the biggest electric producers in uh, Mongolia, in the upper Mongolia area, because mm. they were mining Bitcoin and they were stressing out the electrical grid for the rest of the area. The, 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 the Communist Party of China literally just said, you're done. We're shutting you down. That happened last week. Well, look at Russia. Russia took a, a huge, in, somewhere near Siberia, okay, took a huge iron mine, okay? And you can imagine the kind of electricity that an iron mine uses, okay? Could you just imagine? They turned it into a Bitcoin mine, from an iron mine to a Bitcoin mine, because they knew that, number one, it's cold as you know what up there, and the and all these hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin mine mining units generate heat so they can heat the place they can use the electricity that they were using for iron mining and who would want to do that now okay we're not exactly in a boom situation where we need iron but or steel and they turned it into a bitcoin mine that the news was announced and now we hear nothing more about it nothing more about it okay so it's interesting what's happening I will say I can I can I can confidently speak for the people of Siberia, and I don't know how to say this in Russian, but 
you can't burn Bitcoin. Huh? Like you can burn you coal and heat their house, but like. Well, no. What Bitcoin I'm saying is, what I'm now. saying is, you you take a small community of people, you tell them we're going to turn the iron mine into a Bitcoin mine. You install a million fucking ant miner, what they call ant mining machines, um, that are dedicated processors. And you heat the whole you heat the whole town with this, and you use the cheap electricity that you were getting. I don't sure where it was from, and maybe it was from a giant river or something. I mean, whatever the electricity was, they're getting it dirt cheap, okay? Worse than dirt cheap, water cheap, whatever. And um, and now they're mining Bitcoin like crazy, and um, and generating the heat, and you don't have to use the electricity to cool off the million. CPU, you know, multi CPU generating machines that are binding the Bitcoin. And, the, you know, I mean, I'm sure Putin owns it or something, you know. Now, do you really think that they have to cool the equipment in Siberia? Probably not. That's one of the places where they like, don't. Just, o- just open the window. <laughs> well, it's not quite that easy, but yeah, okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it's Siberia. Yeah. It's not like we're talking about, you know, the Gobi Desert. No, no. Well, that's why that's why um, you know Microsoft has giant server farms and Google has giant server farms in northern Scandinavia because they don't have to pay the damn air conditioning bill. You know, I mean, it just makes sense. But who knows? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much. I don't even know about this episode today. We're not really talking much much about entrepreneur stuff, but I don't. Well, okay, so going back, we're, we'll hit. We have still have a couple articles that we could hit. So we have the, let's see. All right, where is it? Yahoo Answers Flows, Warren Buffett's Frugal Habits. That's the clickbait. Uh, burned out millionaires quitting their jobs. I, private money flowing around. Smile Direct Club tumbles on cyber attack news, which I thought was funny. No more, they're not smiling now. Um, Doggy Coin, if I pronounced that correctly, <laughs> reaches 50 cents ahead of Elon Musk's Saturday Night Live appearance. The uh, casino. Like You're just talking I... about the casino. Here's what I don't understand, and I'd like to circle back, as they say at the White House at press conferences, I'd like to circle back to Bill and Melinda Gates. And here's my question. They're getting a divorce after 30 years. They're both about 65, 66 years old. Okay. That's I know because I'm the same, I'm the same age as Bill Gates, so I know Are whatever really? I am, he is. Okay. My so was it hard when it, he moved out of, of your dorm that you didn't have a roommate at Harvard? I was disappointed. I thought he should just at least finish and get his degree, but that's another story. Anyway, um, maybe he'll get an honorary one or something. The guy's worth 130 odd billion dollars. They both manage this slush fund they call a, a foundation that has 60 billion in it. They don't plan on giving anything to their kids, and whatever. But the point is this, after 30 years of marriage, okay, and I don't know if she, what kind of prenup she signed. I'm sure Bill Gates, he's very, very tight fisted. He made her some, sign some kind of prenup. It isn't going to be like the Bezos thing, okay, where she walks away with huge negotiating power and becomes the richest woman in the world, which by the way, he still becomes the richest man in the world. So How how is he the richest man in the world? After that divorce, like, shouldn't she? He be made her the richest woman in the world, and he's still the richest. He must man not have given world. her anything, because like he, he did. Be, she, she, he did. He gave her, her like thirty. He gave her some thirty billion or something. Yeah, but that's away. my whole point. Is he's worth like three hundred billion? Like whoever her lawyer. Well, so is what? Fucked. I mean, all she did was take care of the kids. It's not like she owned the company. Twenty-five years of marriage, and like she should, she should easily get half. And she well, she taken... gave about half of that way, half of that money that she got. She gave away to, uh, and then she married some guy in Seattle, a plumber or something. I don't know. The whole what? thing is, re- yeah, she's married now. She remarried some guy oh, in, in, in 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 Washington. I think he's a plumber. Or, you know, he does something anyway. But the point is this, and he and I don't want to belabor it, but thirty years of marriage. $130 billion in wealth. They're both managing this foundation thing, which is supposed to be doing great, but I have yet to hear one positive thing come out of it, to be honest with you. They haven't cured malaria. They haven't cured cancer. I don't know what they're spending the money on. 
I don't think they're getting a huge ROI on it. Why couldn't they just stay together and just agree to disagree and go there, you know, do their own thing? Why did they have to get a divorce? Are they really that much on each other's nerves that they that, that they decided to, you know, to call it quits? You know, I mean, it doesn't I, make I was sense. wondering, I was wondering the same thing. Like you're gonna pay a bunch of money to lawyers. Oh, you're gonna that's to, nothing. Like, dissolve, even if they dissolve. paid a billion dollars to lawyers, they it. wouldn't you're even gonna, miss it. But it's a bill. Well, no, they trust me. Those people miss it. Um, <laughs> you're gonna like they're they're not giving money out. You know what I mean? But you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to basically break illiquid assets. And it's complicated. Like, it's got to be complicated. Like no matter I was what. Just, without getting into it. Like I remember it, when I was uh, the I got married the uh, first time I got married. Uh, first time lasted, well i was married i was married before yeah for like two oh, years I, I, so it wasn't even i that didn't long. know that my friend i did yeah not know that. yeah huge train wreck two years didn't last out that long oh. when we got divorced we did without going too far into it we did a pro se <laughs> divorce which means like no lawyers you take you know yeah we'll just we'll come to an agreement you know it's almost like yeah. wedding crashers you go to a mediator figure out what you want what you don't want and <laughs> Maybe that's what they did. Who knows? But like, maybe it's just, I can't imagine that she got emb- publicly embarrassed to sleeping with, like, he got caught sleeping with a really hot television anchor and it went public and she didn't take half. Like, I, I, I would have thought she would have said, screw it. You embarrass me. I'm going to, I'm going to make your life a living hell and had a board seat take, or, you know, maybe like. If Jeff Bezos, in a sense, let's say on the board, he controls like he has three other kind of lackey board members that kind of just do whatever he says. I'm sure she doesn't. Her lawyer probably didn't say, well, I want three that do the same thing. Yeah, I'm sure. Look, I, 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 I've, I've been familiar with. I don't know him personally, but I've been familiar with the shenanigans of Bill Gates for a long, long time, all the way back to Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft DOS 2.1. Okay, I've 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 seen this guy doesn't leave anything to chance. His dad was a financial guy. He's very detail oriented to say the least. I'm sure I'm he had, paper. yeah, he had something. Dad he had a that. huge amount of paperwork and legalities in place for this eventual thing to happen. I just don't understand why two people can't just get along after 30 years of marriage. <laughs> well, when the husband, when the guy was like Dr. <laughs> Evil, I would he like is to say Do- that. He, 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 he is. doesn't look like Dr. Evil, but he looks like he is no, Dr. He, Evil. He looks like he looks like Minnie grew up, right? So my whole thing is... Bill is, Gates? Is that, no, I'm sorry, not Bill Gates. I was thinking Jeff Bezos. All right, come on now. Let's okay, get our let's, all, our, let's looks, get our you know, megalomaniacs you know who, in order. <laughs> you know who Jeff? You know who? You know who Bill Gates looks like? Bill Gates looks. I don't know if you know the um. There's a comedian who's a puppeteer, Jeff Dunham. Yes. He is that old guy puppet. Bill Gates. I know that old like guy. The, puppet. Yes. Yeah. He kind of looks like the younger version of the old guy. Bill Gates looks like what? he is one of Jeff Dunham's puppets. That's that's Joe Biden. The puppet looks exactly. Oh no no no! The, right, that's Joe Biden now. But Bill Gates looks like he would be the younger version of that guy. I don't know. Like 20 years earlier. But, oh, my gosh. By the way, if Jeff Dunham is listening to this, that would be a great, great addition to your puppet. Uh, I hope Bill Jeff Gates, I Gates. hope Jeff Dunham is, is, is listening to this because he needs to change the – he needs to name that puppet Joe he have his, E. Biden he could, he and have redo his, his act with that puppet – talking like joe biden you know and he could create a whole act with that because it looks just like joe biden and i don't have anything against joe biden i thought i saw i i when i do my walk around the neighborhood i saw some beat up car with virginia license plates that something something like give god something god whatever god gains or give god the gains or on their license plate and hanging hanging from their rear view mirror is a mask and on the mask it says pro america anti biden 
Okay. This got some bitter got some bitter people out there. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's obviously a blue collar worker. Hope I I doubt if he's in the union because I mean obviously if he's in the union and he's a Democrat and if he's a Democrat he supports Biden so he must be some kind of rogue rogue blue collar guy from uh, from New Hampshire or someplace like that. New Hampshire. Because of, or, or Connecticut or whatever, and he's here in San Diego, you know, hammering away or doing solar or climbing on roofs or whatever he's doing. But he's got to have a mask that says pro-America, anti-Biden? Seriously? These are the people that, when they're watching sports, they don't root for a team. They root against somebody. <laughs> and the only reason I say that is because that's what I do. Like, if I turn on a football game yeah. and I don't have an already determined vested interest, I will literally, like, MMA is the same thing. Like they'll, like, they'll have two people fighting and I don't know who they are. And I literally am just trying to figure out which one am I rooting against. Mm. So, yeah, I could see that. There's people that said the same thing. There was Republicans that said, you know, there's Democrats that said, not my president. It's the same thing. There's people out yeah. there that just, they just have a different side of it. And I, and right. I like bitter people because they play poker with the cards face up. So, <laughs> no, I do. I like that. I appreciate yeah. that. Like, yeah. like if you're going to, if you're going to hide what your intentions or your, you know, whatever, yeah. it's like step up to the plate and have an opinion. But if you're willing to be out there, even if it's totally different from mine, you can yeah. hate the people that I support or love the people I support. I don't really care. I just love, I love bitter people. Now, that being said, my favorite basketball player of all time wasn't, anybody that most people would know but there's this guy it was named this is uh oh, what was his sometimes my memory sucks um you've got a lot on your gilbert, mind Ar right gilbert arenas okay and basically he was in he was in he never got recruited out of high school um went to a small college went to arizona became an all-american and then didn't get drafted so that when he when he got signed with the first team he was on he picked the number zero Mm. And they asked him, why did you pick the number zero? Because there was, I don't think there was anybody in the NBA at the time that had that number. And he said, mm -hmm. because no, that's the amount of teams that wanted me. And so he ends up becoming an all-star, 25 point a game, whatever. This guy's just a great score. Come, uh, then the Olympics come around. And mm. he tries out for the Olympic team and gets cut. And this was when Mike Krzyzewski, the Duke coach, was the, was the coach. So the next day, he, he, he had a press conference. <laughs> I swear to God, he had a press conference. And he goes, I'm just here to announce that I'm officially exploring to see if I have any eligibility left, which obviously he didn't because you're playing pro basketball. You can't go back to college and play after you've been in the NBA. And if so, I'm going to go to North Carolina. So I have two shots at Krzyzewski every year because they're arch rivals. And so he literally went out of his way to hold a press conference because he was pissed that he didn't make the team, and he's officially now holding a grudge against this guy for the rest of his life. Like, I love that. Like, I don't even know if he's a nice person or a bad person, or he's a good, whether you like him playing or not, he's lazy, good player, hard worker, I don't know. But I just love anybody that just is, has not afraid to just show their bitterness out in public. I just love it. All right. Well, let's segue to something else that I, I uh, experienced uh the other day and uh, then maybe we'll just wrap this up i don't even know what to call this episode today i think it's just a conversation between matt and al maybe but anyway <laughs> let me tell you this so i'm on meet up goes around comes around maybe <laughs> i don't know i don't know i seriously but um I'm on Meetup and I get this announcement about this group and it's called the uh, Law of Attraction. Amorous Bay Park Couples? No, no, no. no. I wish. Okay. Um, uh, it was, <laughs> I don't live in Bay Park anyway, but um, it's close, but I don't live oh, there. Bay Park, um, Bay Park, yeah. So you put the hose. So anyway. <laughs> so anyway, it's this, it's this thing called, uh, you know, uh, it's one of these... Uh, I'm a coach and I'm going to teach you how to get rich. And the secret to getting rich is the law of attraction. And the secret to, to is, is to join my Zoom call 
And let me tell you about a book that was written in 1910 that I've, writ that I've read 80 times and that I was making $5,000 a month. And then I started doing what this book says to do, you know, after I read it probably 20 times or something or other, you know, like people feel about thinking grow rich or whatever, except this is a different book. And supposedly this was the book that inspired the woman, was given to her by her daughter, inspired her to do the secret the law of attraction and the moon oh, really? secret. So he gets on, he gets on the Zoom call, and there's about 19 people on it. And he's got two or three meetup groups, whatever. So I I I I didn't have anything to do that morning. So I thought I'm gonna check into it. And uh, and also there was this person that was part of the group that I was kind of interested in. So uh, she said she was going to be in that. Zoom call. So that was another enticement. But anyway, I get on there. He starts reading this book from 1910 and talking about how he's like, he doesn't claim to be super rich, but he claims that after he read this book, he went from being a salesman at 5,000 a month to like 80,000 a month or some crazy, ridiculous amount of money. He's severely overweight. Um, and he's reading this book from 1910, okay, so you can only imagine what this book is like. Are there some positive aspects to mindset and attitude and 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 having the being in the right um, being in the right uh, place at the right time and creating synchronicity and all that kind of good stuff? Yeah, there's something to it. And this guy's, then he, he reads from this book, then he opens it up to the people in the in the group to 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 have to make comments, right? And uh, and one guy's like in New York and he says, Yeah, I want to get into real estate. You could tell he doesn't know. He, he he you know, he's barely making it. And I and after listening to you and 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 adopting some of you know and 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 exercising and doing some of your your principles and practices. I, I'm walking. Uh, I'm walking along, and I see this guy who's a big real estate guy, and I start talking to him. My whole attitude has changed, and think I'm going to get into real estate now and make a ton of money. I don't know what he does now, but it's probably some kind of minimum wage bullshit. And I'm going like, oh my god! This I checked this guy out on Facebook. He's got 64. He's got 34 followers on Facebook, and yet. He's advising people on how to become rich and wealthy and successful. Maybe he screwed all his friends. He got rich and successful. well, you know, he's he and, and then he and, and then I find out he's selling this course that he does, or some kind of course or coaching thing that normally sells for seven hundred dollars, and he's selling it for thirty four ninety five. Well, that's a deal, Al. You need to sign up for that. <laughs> I, I got to go back and I got to circle back to that and see what's really going on, you know, with that. I might have to sign up for that. But anyway, um, that's a deal. It's just the whole thing is just so ridiculous. And what I want to what I want to say is this people out there that are entrepreneurs or thinking about becoming entrepreneurs. If you have a mindset that is already so negative. And 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 that you that you need somebody like that to tell you to read a book that was written in 1910, or think and grow rich and memorize it, read it 80 times. Man, you, you need to wake up and smell the coffee, really seriously. Now, I, I I'm not saying that. Look, when people are desperate, when people are confused and desperate and uh and and feel like there's no possible they have no hope and everything is going to hell in a handbasket which it may soon do that in our country so i you know if you need that kind of a thing to get you over the hump or to get you out of your doldrums to, to inspire you a little bit or whatever okay but honestly, folks, please, it's not the answer. It's not the answer, okay? The answer is more about what we're doing in this, in this podcast. And it is about some guy who calls himself a success, get rich, 
coach. And uh, I don't know, it's just disappointing. I, I think what's going to be happening here soon, the boiling frog thing, the titration effect, the glacier that's moving down the mountain, whatever, is everything. Right now, the 1% of the 1% own 80-something percent, maybe more. I don't know. It's going to get worse. It's going to double and then double again and then double again. And there's going to be a point in this country where the 1% of the 1%, maybe the 1%, and at least the 10% are going to own 99.9% .9 of everything. Okay. Everybody is going to be a renter. Everybody is going to be work. 90% of the people are going to be working for minimum wage. I don't, you know, and, and not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, yeah, there is. okay, there you is. know, <laughs> it's not, a, it's not what I would call a bright future, a hopeful future, you know, and uh, I don't know, maybe we should just wrap it up today with that. I, I don't want to sound negative, but the yeah, only thing that is the only do better. Okay. The only thing that's saving this country are the entrepreneurs. The only thing that, that could save this country are the entrepreneurs. And I want to I want to support the entrepreneurs and continue to support the entrepreneurs in their in their uh, in their endeavors. And I I would like to I would like to see more entrepreneurs contact us. And soon, oh, let me just say this, I am lining up some very interesting expert guests for our show. Uh, are, you getting the guy that, are you getting the guy that has the $700 program for $39? No, I'm not getting him. I'm not, I don't even think I wanna be in his group anymore. It's just ridiculous, okay? But I, I do feel that there's some good people out there we can have as guests and also, we're basically going to have, you know, two kinds of guests in the future. We're going to have the expert guest, and we're going to have the entrepreneur who wants to come on the show, be on the show, and tell us about what they're doing, and then we're going to help them to have that aha moment on the next step and the next step they need to take to be, to make this, to actualize this, to make this thing happen for themselves. If they're stuck, they're going to get unstuck, and that that's our goal for the show yeah. in the future. So, and I'll just add on that, I'm like for any entrepreneurs or anybody out there that's trying to figure out how to make heads or tails of what's gonna come, um, you know, if you wanna come, uh, if you wanna reach out to us, whether you wanna be a guest or just wanna, you know, get feedback, one, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. If you're on YouTube, get notified as well. Click that little button to the right of the subscription button. But you have to understand that like, we're living in really weird times. This is not a time where like we alluded to earlier, where everything is going to happen linearly, linearly, you're going to see ups and downs. You're going to see inflation, deflation. You're going to see, I think, a big shock to the system in the next two to three years. The question is, what can you do? And this is always the question you should be asking is, what can you do to profit from it? So what can you do to store up money? Like realistically, like if I didn't have my you know, my Robin Hood account or going to law school or maybe I might even change this up. I have a nice down payment. If one of the, if the housing market crashes, I'm going to be able to scoop one of these houses up and have a down payment for that. So, but it takes time to do that. You can't do it in three months. You can't do it in three days. You can do it in three years. Um, but you need to have a plan about what you're going to do. You need to look at the business, you know, businesses. What are the businesses that are going to be there? How is it going to impact you? I think you're, you're I think you're right. I think all this clamoring in the news about minimum wage i think if it if it only if minimum wage only affected a small percentage of the people it wouldn't be that big of a deal but i think a lot more people are going to be paid minimum wage because well i'm not going to get into the big you know get into a long diatribe on that from an economics perspective but i think that's going to be the case but if you're an entrepreneur and you want to figure out what is going to succeed in the next three to four years you know, you kind of got to do the math and figure out where things are going and not just, you know, if you're watching one channel, if you're watching Fox News only, you're not going to figure it out. If you're watching CNN or MSNBC only, you're not going to figure it out. If you're watching whatever comes to you on Apple News, God knows you're not going to figure it out. But if you're looking at places and listening to people like us that 
have a very, very different view on things um, and aren't necessarily wedded to an ideology, I think you have a better chance of figuring it out. But more specifically, you're talking to people that have been successful in business in a number of different areas um, and kind of understand how the world works. So I agree with, in just closing, I'll just say, Al, I agree with what you said. I don't always agree with you. In fact, we disagree on a lot of stuff. I will say this, in the next two to three years, I think you're going to see a big deflationary thing where prices of certain things are going to go up. I think electricity is going to go through the roof um, Mm. for obvious reasons. Mm. Um, And that goes up. That means prices for consumer goods go up. But I think when you look at real estate and some other things, I think you're going to see some massive deflationary pressures on there. Mm. Uh, People, landlords that haven't been paid rent in a year, are going to are going to have some tough decisions to make in probably the next 12 to 24 months. Well, uh, but the good news is this know. is money it's 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 like the law of thermodynamics, you know, matter is never destroyed, it's it's converted, right? From mass to energy, energy to mass. But I will tell you this in in finance it's the same thing. Money is never destroyed, it's just transferred. So if you're sitting here and saying I always wanted to be rich, I always wanted to have a lot of money, but I missed 2008. I'm never going to get this back. I, I really believe, and I, I thought about it while we're on this podcast, I think in the next two to three years, you're going to have another opportunity like in 2008 that you've never had before. And I didn't believe that before. But you just have to be prepared for it. You have to keep your powder dry. You have to have resources ready, and you have to plan for it. Um, yeah. Stop spending all have- that money at Starbucks and Jeez, start saving no your money. Save your freaking money. like Absolutely. Absolutely, because you can give it. You can't fight a war without ammunition, man. You know, you right. gotta have you, some something st- stacked, st- stored away. I mean, you know what I'm it, saying? And it goes back to that story of Joseph in the Bible, right? It's like unless they <laughs> saved the grain for seven years, they would have starved. So that you need true. to make an affirmative decision and do things differently. So if you're spending all your money on Twitch, or on Starbucks, <laughs> or on phones, or on whatever it is. You're gonna miss out, point blank. Yeah. You know, Tighten I drive a car that I drive a car that's 25 years old. It's an it's a cool car. Don't get me wrong. It's paid mm. off. It looks nice. It's a fun car to drive. But I haven't had a car payment in forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that money is being is, is being used for other things. So, right. you know, thir- 20 years from now, I'm gonna be way better off than if I said, oh, okay, well, yeah, I, I know I'm driving this car, but I'm just gonna go get a new car. And I'm going to go get a, a car payment or I'm going to lease a car or whatever it is. No, those are the people that are going to lose out. So you have to think very counterintuitively. And we're here to help you out. So make sure to reach out to us. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, we'd love to answer your question on the podcast. If Maybe you might make a good guest on the podcast. Al's kind of our executive producer right now, so he's booking guests. So if you want to reach out, if you want to be on our podcast, um, reach out to Al. His contact information is in the show notes. Anything else, Al, before we sign off? I think that's it for Taco Tuesday, my friend. All right. Yes. And we are film, We are recording this not only on Taco Tuesday, but on Star Wars Day, <laughs> May the 4th, which is Taco, <laughs> Star Wars Day for people with, lit, with a list. <laughs> um, I'm glad we could end this with a chuckle because I was really sounding kind of negative and down there for a bit. And you know what? I'm not really that way, so I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but no, it's okay. But but you know, it's the smart people will go through the downside, but then we'll have to figure out a way how to succeed, and that's what we're here for, right? Um, but we're real people, just like anybody else, mm. you know. But you have to you have to plan and be very. It's almost like whatever the world is doing, you try to do the opposite, and your odds <laughs> are you're probably going to succeed. It goes huh. back to it goes back to um, C. C. Barnum's quote, the guy that said, "There's a sucker born every minute." He said. You can never go broke underestimating the intelligence of the American people. And that's people as a whole, large group, writ large. So when you do the opposite of what everybody's doing, odds are you're probably going to be successful. You just want to be ahead of the curve, right? Right, right. All right. Good so advice. With that, being, with that being said, appreciate you guys being here today. My name is Matt. And I am Al. And we will see you later. Adios, muchachos. Adios.